everybody in this video i am going to review one of lenovo's budget models the ideapad 110 notebook this model is mainly targeted at home and casual users first time laptop buyers whose usage mostly restricted to web browsing watching videos creating documents and mail gaming let's find out whether this laptop delivers for such needs the ideapad 110 comes in various configurations and the one which i am reviewing now is powered by pentium quad core m3710 cpu based on intel braswell architecture and here you can have a quick look at the complete specification of this laptop model the entire laptop chassis is made of plastic with matte surface and completely black color the top cover attracts fingerprints but is otherwise quite resistant to mild scratches The overall design of the IdeaPad 110 is nothing spectacular and the build quality feels cheap and it clearly reminds us that this is an absolute budget notebook. I didn't see any unwanted panel gaps across the body. The top lid of the display panel bends inside even with the slightest pressure. But thankfully it does not affect the functionality of the screen. I would still recommend keeping the lid clear of any kind of heavy objects to prevent screen damage. The overall build lacks rigidity and you can feel this every time while lifting the laptop or moving it around. In my opinion, the build quality is quite disappointing when compared to other budget laptops in this price range. The base of the laptop has rubber feet in all corners with the rear ones being slightly raised to enhance comfort while typing. Though it weighs just around 2.2 kg which is standard nowadays for 15.6 inches notebooks the laptop feels quite bulky when carrying or while looking at it from the sides Lenovo has managed to include all the necessary ports with the IdeaPad 110 but where it loses is the placement of the ports and the quantity of USB inputs on the left side you will find a power jack tiny pin hole for Lenovo one key recovery button in case if the laptop fails to boot or if you like to enter by a screen a full sized hdmi ethernet one usb 2.0 one usb 3.0 and the 3.5 mm audio jack as you noticed all the io ports are located on left side of the laptop you need to live with just two usb inputs with this laptop and to make it even worse they are insanely placed close to each other As a result, it's almost impossible to plug two USB devices at the same time, especially when one of them is large in dimension. I wish both the placement and number of USB port selection could be better. On the right side, a DVD burner and a Kensington lock slot. On the front, two LED indicators for power on and battery status. It lacks hard disk activity indicator though. A SD card reader slot at the center portion. Above the display, 0.3 megapixel webcam and a microphone. The webcam quality is terrible in this notebook. The output is extremely pixelated and almost unusable even under bright conditions. The IdeaPad 110 is equipped with a chiclet style keyboard and also has separate numeric keypad. The key surface is flat, but the keys feels too spongy with no resistance when pressed. and the travel point is too shallow which is not the case with Lenovo's previous models and this greatly affects the overall feedback from the keys the keyboard bends inwards when typing aggressively but it is not that bad when compared to the G5080 model that i had reviewed earlier it didn't register some of my clicks when typing even at moderate speeds which required retyping the letters missed during the first attempt The most frequently used buttons tab and right shift are smaller in size. This right shift is located too close to the up arrow and very often I ended up hitting it instead of the arrow button. Even the numpad layout feels very much cramped. It also lacks dedicated page up, page down, home and end keys which are usually present in other 15.6 inch models. Thankfully Lenovo provides num lock and caps lock LED indicators on this laptop. If you are in the process of buying a new laptop for heavy text editing, you can happily skip this model since this keyboard is pretty far from providing good typing experience. 
Gracefully, the touchpad experience is not that bad. The navigation surface is adequately sized and multi-touch gestures works fine. Has got separate left and right click buttons. The textured surface glides smoothly while scrolling using two fingers. The mouse buttons register the clicks precisely and more silently when pressed. Like most budget notebooks, the Lenovo IP110 is equipped with a glossy TN HD display with a resolution of 1366 by 768. The maximum brightness level is strictly average and combined with the reflective surface, it leaves one struggling to read on the screen under harsh light conditions and renders it useless outdoors. With the use of TN panel, be prepared to witness poor color reproduction and viewing angles from this laptop. For reference, I am going to compare this laptop's display with my ASUS ZenBook that uses IPS panel. I suggest you to see this part in either IPS or BA panel display to spot the difference. As you can see, the colors looks completely washed out in the Lenovo notebook compared to the IPS screen on the left. But the viewing angle performance is not that bad as I expected and color consistency is affected only at extreme angles. The hinges at both ends are quite stiff to hold the display at all angles but the screen wobbles a lot when tilted. The hinges open really wide up to full 180 degrees but the average viewing angles leave this feature somewhat unusable. The Lenovo screen does not use PWM method across all brightness levels, so there is no screen flickering in this model. You can see the wavering effect in the reference screen that employs pulse width modulation method when brightness is reduced from 100%. And our Lenovo model is flicker free. This quality may appeal to users who have big trouble with such flickering and can enjoy less eye strain and fatigue with this model. The IdeaPad 110 employs a single speaker situated right above the keyboard. The maximum volume level is very low and barely fills a room. It has poor audio quality and is one of the worst speakers I have seen in a budget laptop in a long time. Lenovo has used low capacity 2500mAh battery on this model. With balanced power profile enabled and brightness level set to 50%, it lasted about 2 hours and 20 minutes with 60% web browsing and the remaining time editing documents. The battery runtime reduced further to less than 2 hours when watching 1080p video full time. I am disappointed with the battery performance of this laptop, despite using a low powered Pentium 3710 CPU, which consumes just 6 watts at full load. The IdeaPad 110 runs on the Pentium N3710 quad core processor with 4 GB of RAM and integrated Intel HD 405 graphics. This Pentium operates at a base frequency of 1.6 GHz and reaches up to 2.56 GHz when there is a demand of more CPU power. Before conducting the performance tests, I connected the power adapter to run the laptop directly from main power so that any power saving features won't bottleneck my benchmarks. And the power profile was set to maximum performance. Performance on general tasks like light web browsing, high definition video playback, editing documents gave me a good experience. Doing CPU intensive tasks like media editing, video encoding and rendering with this laptop will leave you very much disappointed as it takes enormous amount of time to complete such operations. For those jobs, I suggest you to consider at least an i5 CPU based notebook. Moreover, opening multiple tabs in Google Chrome caused the laptop to slow down drastically. And this laptop is suitable only for editing documents, surfing web within 3 to 5 tabs and playing HD videos. It simply doesn't have enough power for serious multitasking. Full HD videos play smoothly but it stutters a lot when running 4K videos, being bottlenecked severely by weak CPU. And here are the scores from popular benchmark softwares. Eyewitness the Pentium N3710 is very weak in single core performance and that greatly impacts general tasks. The Intel HD 405 graphics can only handle less demanding games at playable frame rates. I managed to get more than 30 FPS in Minecraft with details set to medium quality.
As you can see, it barely provides 10 FPS in GTA 5, even with all details are set to minimum levels. Here is the crystal disk mark result obtained from the 1TB hard drive used in this model. The transfer speeds are on par with other rotational hard disk models. You can improve this laptop speed by replacing the RPM drive with a solid state disk and I guarantee you will get at least 25% overall performance improvement. The laptop took less than 40 seconds to boot into the desktop. When the CPU is at full load, the bottom portion right below the trackpad becomes hot but remains at tolerable level. On my entire usage, the CPU temperature barely crosses 80 degrees despite the lack of active cooling system. That is, it has no fans to cool the internals of the laptop. This model has no maintenance arch and the entire casing has to be disassembled if you like to access internal components. Even the battery is not user replaceable. I managed to open the laptop casing and it is not that difficult like I expected. I also created a separate video to show you how to open the case. The link is placed in the description section right below this video. Here's a quick look at the internal components. You can see there is no fan used to cool the CPU. And sad thing, you can only upgrade the hard drive and RAM is soldered in the motherboard. And you are stuck with the 4GB in this laptop model. And this is going to be a big deal breaker for many people when designing this model. Coming to the conclusion, well the IdeaPad 110 laptop has many compromises due to its low price. The biggest trade-offs with this model are its poor keyboard layout and feedback, pathetic sound quality, below average battery life, lack of maintenance hatch, non-expandable memory, flimsy build quality, fewer USB ports and finally poor CPU performance. I am surprised to see so many compromises in one laptop model. The two advantages I see with this laptop are its price and its very silent operation due to fanless design. The model isn't worth its price and I highly recommend to spend extra on something better. At this price, it doesn't really offer any value for your hard earned cash. Thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up if you find this video useful and also leave your thoughts queries in the comment section and I'm going to reply for that. Consider subscribing my channel for more upcoming videos.